This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I want you to look closely and tell me what you see. What does it remind you of? What does it look like? Yes, it's a tree, but what could it be? Welcome back. I'm really excited for the build to show you this week. I've teamed up with somebody you probably know, another local woodworker slash YouTuber here in Portland, Oregon, Pam over at Blacktail Studio. That's right, we are teaming up on a table. I've got the base, then we're gonna sell it on eBay to see what it can bring. Hope you enjoy the build. Let's get started. This is the walnut I'll be using for the base. And I finally talked Cam into doing something non-metal. If we're gonna pop his chair, I don't know if I can say that on YouTube. If we're gonna de-virginize him, nope, not getting better. <laughs> if we're going full wood for the base, I think it should be pretty interesting. So I want to do some bent lamination. I don't know how to steam bend, so I'm gonna be using a vacuum to form this wood into curved sections. Let's figure that out. There's several reasons why I've been looking forward to this collaboration with Cam. We're basically opposites. He works with giant slabs and epoxy. I like small, intricate OCD projects. He wears short pants, I wear long pants, flip-flops versus boots, and he narrates his videos where I like music. You get the picture. doesn't bend. But if you make it thinner, a little bit of flex, thinner yet, you can get quite a tight bend. So in order to get this thickness to make the curve on the form, utilizing the thin strips, we can stack a few together to get that thickness and we'll epoxy all the strips together, stick it in a vacuum and you get the strength of that thickness, you get the stability from the epoxy and you get to curve wood. that side, didn't eat that side. That. <laughs> it's not gonna be part of this uh, project evidently, uh, but <laughs> that's really damn thin. All right, cool, first set in. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let that cook overnight and we'll see you in the morning. Good morning, new shirt, new day, new me. Let's get these out of the bag. I don't know why I like this so much. Save a part, are you ready? Wait for it, wait for it. 
So good. Cool. That's tight. Gonna look all something like that. All right, next. Got one more to go. Uh, gonna get this popped out, the last one in, and good to go. I put wax paper under it this time, much better. And while we wait for that last one to cook, let's go ahead and move on to the base. Base. What did I do with that thing? Oh, well, I guess I don't get dust collection. Oh, there it is. So let's get some more veneer cut up. I'm gonna do the top, the bottom, then we'll do a border. We'll do the top plate as well. Step one, cut veneer. Let's do it. All right, let's get back to the bendy bits. Curves on curves, on curves. And while I do that, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. I've had my domains and website through Squarespace for at least the last four years. It's made it really easy to make a beautiful website while funneling traffic from all over the web on my social presence down into see my portfolio. That's where I showcase all my work. So I generate leads for custom furniture through my site, but also have a shop for smaller things like my merch, t-shirts, hats. It makes it super easy on the back end with really cool domains like dot furniture. So head on over to squarespace.com slash Sawyer Design for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks for sponsoring this video, Squarespace. Now let's get back to this project. All right, so what did you see? There's a Netflix show about mushrooms. 
And the way the slab branches out immediately reminded me of mycelial networks of mushrooms. Cam posted on Instagram and I reached out and said I'd love to pitch him some designs. This was the first one, very mushroom-like. He hated it. <laughs> it wasn't really his style. Okay, back to square one. Maybe a little more on the nose, but it reminded me of one of those Saharan trees. Okay, right, I just need to make a base that looks like a tree? All right, so you're starting to see that sort of earthy, rooty vibe that I'm going for. So we need a center support post. The tricky part about that is the way I designed this. It's sort of like a tree trunk in that it comes sweeps up, which means the support post is going to be octagonal and tapered. And that seems like it's the next step. So let's figure that out now. So now that I've got the cone, pyramid, pyramid. Now that I've got the square cone slash pyramid, that'll accept four different legs, but we have eight of those. So what I need to do is turn that into an octagonal pyramid. The issue is the other side, the issue is the other end is a little bit smaller, which means all of these bevels on the edge taper as well. I could set up a jig for that, but that sounds just sort of complicated. You've got angles on angles on angles, so I'm just gonna do it by hand. Initially, I wanted this to be a little oversized because I wasn't sure where the legs were going to land on it. Now that I'm sure, I'm going to take down this radius just a little bit so the border's a little wider. Where it's at right now would be about an inch and that just seems a little unsubstantial for the size of this. Uh, and then we'll get the border made for the top and the bottom. Cool, let's do it.
All right, step one is to fine tune these two joints that weren't coming together quite right. And then I'll figure out how to cut that angle on the ends of these. All right, I'm just looking at this point where they all gather and it's looking toy, like a toy guy all the way around. Kind of ugly right now. We'll fix that, don't worry. inlay will be black to kind of tie in some of these compliments from the top. Uh, I know Cam will 99.9% .9 chance of him using black epoxy in the top. So I think there's some visual interest I could add by adding basically a black ring around the outside. I've cut these, we'll ebonize them, and they'll set around the edge. So get that in the vacuum bag. Pre-finish this uh, bottom piece uh, just to fill in the grain. So when I add black, it doesn't bleed everywhere. Uh, and then we'll pre-finish the rest of it and get these sub assemblies done so we can get the assembly finished. Let's do it. Audio is my worst enemy. 
Now that the sub-assemblies are together, we're just waiting on that last round of epoxy. And then we need to figure out where this base attaches into the bottom plate here. And then we need to get some mounting positions onto the top plate that'll go up into the bottom of the slab. Ooh, that's, that's ballsy. Um, drilling unsupported in the bottom of those laminations, uh, those took a lot of time. No stop collar, not even a little piece of tape for depth. Yeah, I don't think I'd do that, and here's why. How pretty is that? I love the way walnut pops with a little shellac on it. We'll get these buffed out and let's put them together. Uh, but first, I just talked to Cam and he is not ready with the table yet, but he does need our help. So he's deciding on edge profile. So I'm gonna give you four options here and just comment down below which one you like the best. actually sits a little better if there are four solid contact points. So I just ripped some doweling in half and set those in at the feet. And that gives me a little play to level out the table as well. Home stretch, you getting excited yet? I know I am.
I am just stoked on how this turned out. It turned out better than I could have imagined. I really appreciate you tuning in this week. If you aren't already, do hit that subscribe button. Now let's see some money shots. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this and we'll see you on the next build. Peace.